Hi folks, welcome once again to a Gaz Labs vlog. I've got a few things to show you today. <laughs> um, I've been, been given a few kits and bits and pieces. It's funny, when people learn that you make, um, you either um, play around with the electronic kits or maybe just build things from schematics, you'll be amazed at just what people give you. And um, today is no um, exception. Um, it's something called a, a DTR3. Now let me show you the box that it's come in. And there you go, there's the box. It's not small for an 80, this is an 80 meter um, QRP CW transceiver. So it will, oh, let me just show you this. I'm gonna put you over to the GoPro. And underneath the lid, we have a pile of paper and a little cube, which I've not unwrapped. Don't know whether to do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna unwrap, I don't know what's in there. It could be anything. I mean, it, 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 it could be an old Christmas cake for all I know. It's just a box, but um, I've had a look at the wrapping and it's 1990. <laughs> so it's 30 years old. And not only that, but check the bag, internal bag out. Look at that. It's like mintykins. That is 1990 fresh, that. That's got 1990s air in there. I mean, what do I do with it? Do I open it? Do I make it? Do I build the kit? I'm never going to use, I'm never going to use um, CW. I'm, you know, I'm just not going to. I can't be bothered to learn it, it'd just be, that would be too hard at my age, but, you know, what do I do with it? Do I, um, you know, do I, uh, I just don't know. Do I, do I give it to someone that's going to, to, to actually use, um, to build it and use the CW side of it? It's a bit of a tough one, so I don't know what to do. But anyway, that um, let me show you. Also, it comes with a, a red book as well. I'll show you that. Um, and yeah, it's all there. It just really is just all there. I mean, check this out. Someone's really gone to a lot of detail. All the drilling guides for the for the case. The layout, the board layout, the uh, hookup, all the all the hookup uh, stuff for all the pots, really nicely laid out, really lovely. Um, everything there, all the stuff for the um, for the inductors. I think there's somewhere around there's some winding things as well. Just everything, everything you want. Someone's gone to a lot of time and effort to do this. All the inductor windings, taps, and all that sort of stuff. How to construct the VFO. A little block diagram there. You can see that. Just um, fabulous. Anyway, like I said, don't know what to do. Um, and that brings me on to the next thing because um, there are some things that I wanted to do for myself. I've ordered a IC705. Now, um, I'm going to have to wait for it, unfortunately, but that's, um, that's another story. Um, but it kind of got me thinking. Um, people have been sort of moaning about sort of certain aspects of it to me. Uh, um, Number one is, or the obvious one is the cost. Is it is it an expensive radio? Well, the answer to that in, in my eyes is probably not. It's not a hugely expensive radio. It's a lot of money, but um, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's vastly overpriced. I think you're getting quite a lot of technology for your DOSH. Um, you know, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, really big color screen, touch screen, nice pan adapter for a portable sort of radio, plus an onboard um, 
what they call it, uh, handheld type battery. It um, does have uh, internally, it does have a bit of a die cast aluminium shell, which could possibly help with, um, with a little portable um, antenna to the side of it. But I would, I'm not going to worry about that so much because it doesn't mean anything to me. Plus that I'd be frightened of damage in it um, if I put sort of something like that on. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite a, a nice little radio, um, and I think it's it's all right for the money. The yeah, it's definitely it's all right for the money. You're getting quite a lot. Plus, you get all the USB stuff on the side of it as well, which makes it uh, useful. But anyway, there you go. But the other thing that people have been sort of saying, and for me, it's not a deal breaker at all, and that was the the lack of four meters. Um, I don't care whether it's got four meters or not, to be honest. I would have liked it on there because it would have been a, compl a complete sort of kit, um, really. But for me, there aren't too many people on uh, four meters near me. And the other one, which is more important to me, but it's certainly not a deal breaker again, and that's the lack of a tuner. Um, what I will say is that... Um, it's not beyond anyone's means to just knock a tuner up or get one for a, a, a tuner, um, a manual tuner for about probably 10 or 20 quid. And I'll show you just in a second what I've, I've been out and got. So it's not impossible. And in fact, you know, 15 years ago, I was knocking up um, little tiny QRP tuners with, um, with these things, um, polyvericons. Um, let me show you that. Um, you've probably all seen them um, in the back of a transistor radio, typically around sort of 200 um, uh, picofarad um, up to about 360. Quite useful. Um, dual, um, dual, ba uh, dual bank, so you've got sort of two halves to it, so you can link them up and get quite a lot of, uh, of tuning out of that. Um, the only other thing you're going to need is a little SWR bridge. Now that's actually quite easy to do. What you need is you need some switches to switch the SWR bridge in and out. If you don't want to leave it in. Um, possibly, I've got two of these, so possibly I, I might use two of those polyvericons. But I also got a bag of resistors, 100 ohm resistors. These are about two or oh, five watts I can't remember uh, what these are I think they're five watt what I'm going to do with these I'm going to try and put them all together and make up a nice um, nice dummy load basically or a bridge and um, I can hook that up with, a, with an LED and when you tune the actual uh, poly um, vericons the, the LED will become dimmer and then you want to get it as dim as possible and that would be the best SWR so really easy circuit to do, and I'll show you a little circuit in a second. And um, that is that for those. So all I need to do is provide a little tin to put it in, um, and this handful of bits, everything else I've got upstairs, tucked away. Oh, you need a little inductor probably as well. Um, what else have I got to show you? Um, and before I go on to the kit, um, what I will do is I'll show you a pretty typical... Um, You know, this is, let me try and find this for you. Right, so here you've actually got, that's the SWR bridge there with the LED down the bottom there. Okay, and you can use the switch, one switch to flick the, the um, bridge in or out. And then you can actually tune your two capacitors then to actually get the um, get the best SWR by dimming the um, the LED. So it's a fairly basic circuit. Um, good fun though. Right, before I move on, I have something else that was given to me. I wanted to show you. This is a Mutec 144 megahertz preamplifier, no doubt. Um, no less, I'm sorry. Comes with a little coily bit of cable. And 
some instructions, which I'll show you, and also the goodie bag. And in here we have in a Pooh Brown is a Mutec Limited SLNA 144 S. Now I don't, again, I don't know what I'm going to use this for. Um, I mean, what? I don't know. It's a bit tarnished, but what will I use it for? Any idea how old that is? Answers on a postcard in the uh, comments below. If you let me know how old that is and whether or not it was a thing <laughs> in its uh, in its day, um, I really don't know. Um, and that uh, DTR thing, by the way, is um, it's 1990. Did I tell you that? I think I did. 1990. I still can't get over that. How old was I in 1990? Probably about 20, 22, something like that. No, I would have been, uh, gosh, 24. I would have been 24 in 1990. Right, let's get rid of that. Yeah, instructions as well. And um, if you're interested in the specs, let me see if I can get you so you can see this. Can you see that? There you go. So there you go. Um, it's a bit of a thing. Let's put those in there. And finally, let's um, have a look at my £10 tuner. And the tuner you get is it's like a, a grey box. Let me get rid of those. And that is the overall size of that. Um, this is a USB key. You can see sort of roughly how big that is. Not 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 huge, but and it is quite it is quite light. It's not heavy at all, which is good. So you could actually put that in, you know, in your bag, and it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't add very much to the weight. Um, what do you get in it? Well, obviously you get the box. You get some drilling templates, which you stick on, okay, and that gives you your the holes and the bits and pieces for all of the the knobs, switches, and uh, other paraphernalia, and a little LED down the bottom there. You get some enameled wire and hookup wire in the bottom there, the yellow and the red hookup wire. And you get a an, an rubber water seal to go around the, around the lid of the, of the box. Um, you get the four screws as well, obviously, to hold the lid down. And you get a bag of components. In there, you've got two polyvericons. You've got a switch to switch the bridge in and out. You get your resistors and stuff to make the bridge. You get a toroid, and I think there is a second toroid in there as well, a tiny, tiny little one for the, for the bridge itself. And, yeah, there's another little one in there, just a tiny little one. You get two BNC connectors as well. I'm not going to use both of those. I'm going to use one because on the... 705 you've got a BNC connector coming out of it and uh, I'm going to use a BNC patch cable to link the tuner to the to the radio then I'm going to use an SO239 on the other side of the box and that will give me the the most flexibility I think and it's quite strong as well so all right they're not perfect but it's HF that I'll be using this for so you know I'm not that bothered so that's all good. So yeah, I'm quite um, I'm quite excited, and I will I probably do a little build video of that um, sort of going forward. That might be a bit of fun when I can. Uh, I've just got to have a little bit of a, a clear up in the upstairs office. It's been um, misused over lockdown. Um, I've been doing obviously I'm still doing stuff in the house, and. Um, 
the air that everything's been dumped in there so it just needs a bit of a sort out um, yeah I've had a bit of an experiment with um, Apple Mac as well which has failed miserably um, my plan was to be able to use a, a piece of software called Ecamm now I have to say the people at Ecamm are amazing um, they really have been really super duper supportive unfortunately the Mac has um, really shown its weakness in that uh, they're just not very powerful and this is a MacBook Pro i7 16 gig so it should be able to do a lot better than it, it did do but um, it keeps dropping the audio off of the ATEM and um, if you haven't seen an ATEM before this is a this is an ATEM mini this is the mini pro um, it's a switcher you can switch between different cameras and what it means is that i can i can easily sort of like almost edit on the on the fly i only have to do a little bit at the, at the end of it and uh, it just helps get videos up and plus you can do live off of this as well which is something i will in the future um, possibly look at doing but uh, not at the moment but we'll, we'll see. So I really want to get this up and running. And I've got some good ideas for this. But we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, the, the Mac really didn't work very well. It, it, it just, it sounds like an aircraft taking off, number one. I think there's, um, I think it's got some, some overheating problems. It, it shouldn't get that hot. And it certainly shouldn't rev the fans up like that. I, I'm... You know, I'm fairly confident. So I've got an old here. I've got an old i7 um, laptop. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't want to move it just in case it stops recording. But um, this is an old i7 laptop. It's absolutely donkey's years old. It's uh, 8 gig um, of RAM in it. It's absolutely nothing special. Yet yeah, this is just cruising at sort of 30% um, CPU. And it's giving me a full 30 frames per second. Whereas the iMac couldn't manage 10 frames per second. And the um, CPU was at sort of 70 or 80%. So I'm really confused to why that is, is like that. But anyway, there you go. And why did it keep dropping the audio? Again, answers on a postcard <laughs> in the comments below if you have any ideas of what I can do to make that... Um, cool down and uh, certainly start behaving as it should right thanks for watching see you soon and i'll try not to leave it quite so long next time bye